Hello, I am Anna Offenlanger, and I will be presenting the work Time Splines, Sketch-Based Authoring of Flexible and Idiosyncratic Timelines, written by myself and my colleagues, Matthew Bremer, Fanny Chevalier, and Theophanes Sendilas. Timelines are important for storytelling with temporal data, but standard linear timelines don't cover the wide range of conceptualizations of time. Previous research has explored the narrative function of nonlinear timelines, such as spirals representing the cyclical nature of temporal events, and custom shapes improving memorability. In this work, we explore the potential of idiosyncratic timelines. Idiosyncratic timelines are similar to Bremer et al.'s classification of arbitrary timelines, but focus on the notion that a nonlinear timeline will often encode a meaning unique for the author. When dealing with storytelling and time, we also have to deal with the fact that narratives don't always have a linear passage of time. In movies, they add ellipses to skip over boring bits and time dilation to emphasize significant moment, moments. In this work, we aim to support authoring of idiosyncratic timelines. Most examples we find of timelines do not encode data. This could be due to the lack of support for them in traditional tools and therefore the technical skills needed to produce such visualizations. Additionally, when we look at finished visualizations, you don't see the fact that it's actually very hard to mentally envision what these funky shapes are going to look like. Therefore, when creating them, authors need to go through a few iterations, and tools need to support this. A tool supporting idiosyncratic timeline authoring will therefore need to address the following considerations. Supporting custom timelines, supporting heterogeneous data mapping, and supporting an iterative workflow. In response, we built time splines. Time Splines has two main views, the canvas on the left where we manipulate visuals, and the data drawer on the right where you can load in multiple data sets, the toolbars in between. I'm going to go through a quick example of a fictional scenario showing a person using the system to visualize running data. In this scenario, the author has reached a significant milestone in her hobby of long distance running, and she wants to reflect on her journey. She's noted down a number of significant events and collected statistical data on her running. She starts by visualizing the data on a simple line and immediately sees a large gap. She remembers what caused it and adds some additional events. At first, she thinks she'll de-emphasize the period with an ellipsis. Then, she changes her mind and replaces the section of the timeline with a loop, emphasizing ending up right back where she started. She adds a label to explain what was happening at that time and draws an annotation to express the feeling of the time. Now that her temporal representation is set, she adds her second data set and annotation media from her collection. She finishes up by styling the visualization. In designing time splines, we derive the following design goals from the previously outlined considerations which we aim to support. Flexible representation and manipulation of time, multimodal annotation, and heterogeneous and accumulative temporal data. Supporting a flexible representation of time is not only about the shape of the line, but also the ability to manipulate that shape and the flow of time. Time Splines supports time manipulation in a variety of ways, including the ability to cut, move, and merge lines. When manipulating the temporal representation, the system does its best to keep existing elements consistent with the changing representation. This includes moving data items and warping drawn annotations to remain temporally aligned. To control the flow of time, time splines introduces the concept of time pins. Pins fix dates to certain points on the lines and can be moved to change the passage of time or removed to return time passage to a constant rate. When we look at existing idiosyncratic timelines, we see them annotated with a variety of media. As I showed, we support this not only by offering the ability to include drawing an image as well as text, but by linking those annotations to a temporal representation. The annotations become responsive to changes in that temporal representation, and by doing this, we blur the line between data and annotation. That line is further blurred through the support for heterogeneous and accumulative data. In time spines, we adopt the lazy data binding technique, where visualization elements are first and foremost visual elements, and data binding is applied on the fly as needed. Additional data items can be added at any point during the authoring process, hence accumulative, and the binding is two-way. Users can update the visuals in the data table and they'll be updated in the canvas. Similarly, text values updated in the canvas will update in the table. 
Users can also add additional text items to a table from the canvas. This workflow promotes annotation and contextual items to the status of data, further blurring the line between annotation and data. Moving on to the evaluation. To evaluate how our application supports expressivity, we opted for a triangularization approach, conducting two user studies and assembling a gallery of visualizations we authored ourselves. In the reproduction study, we asked participants to recreate a visualization of a person's running data through step-by-step -step tasks. We did not require participants to adhere exactly to the example, and the results demonstrate how TimeSpline supports a wide variety of styles, even in a simple reproduction. For the freeform study, we gave four participants three hours on their own time to create a visualization with a data set of their choice. We saw that all the participants utilized metaphorical and figurative elements in the visualization. For example, P13 did a spatio-temporal map of elevation data from a mountain bike ride. They used loops in the timeline to indicate breaks. In contrast, P15 also chose a path, but in this case, a purely metaphorical life path. They visualized the events of the fictional biography of Forrest Gump, overlaying them on a figurative path image in the background. In our gallery, among other things, we demonstrate the pragmatic uses of idiosyncratic timelines. In the visualization on the left, a visualization of 400 years of my own family history, I used the shape of the line to wrap around media items, thereby incorporating them into the design of the line. On the right, one of my colleagues did a visualization of data pulled from various music streaming services. He chose to bend the line outwards to allow additional space for album cover images around the numeric data. Incorporating images around numeric data is actually quite tricky, and this rolls us into our limitations in future work. Along with the uses of idiosyncratic timelines, we also encountered some limitations. As P13 puts it, it's not possible to have both very interesting curves and the data being super readable everywhere. P13 ran into this issue with the shape of the curves with the sharp curves in her map. She got around it by aligning the axis to make the peaks in the elevation stand out from the curve, thereby highlighting those victory moments. My colleague overcame the readability issue by ensuring his curves were fairly shallow, thereby making the distances fairly easy to parse. Previous work has looked at how to overcome these challenges, such as the transmogrification technique by Brazeal and it'd be interesting to see how such a technique could be incorporated into a tool like TimeSplines. As a final note for future work, as I mentioned, TimeSplines takes the approach of blurring the boundaries between annotation and data. This brings up an interesting question of what is annotation? What is data? This question has been explored to a certain extent in previous work. For example, I would say that the data hunches work by Lin al. falls into this category, but I think there's more work to be done on this conceptual question. If you're interested in the tool, TimeSplines is available online and should run in most Chrome browsers. If you'd like to reach out to discuss our work, please contact us at the following address or any of the email addresses listed in the publication.